Guess what? Bought another tent. And the lady that sold it to me has done a brilliant job on packing it. I've never seen so much packing in all my life. So I've no idea whether I've been sold up up here or not, but this was cheap. Well, I would say cheap. £90 including delivery. So the tent poles themselves are actually carbon fibre. And as you can see, the brand, in case you didn't realise what it was, is Lightwave. So I've counted 15 pegs and a couple of wee pole repair tubes. I don't know why one actually is carbon fibre and one is aluminium. And the tent itself is a mother care. Which is <laughs> kindly packed it in a mother care netting bag <laughs> for some reason. It's a Lightwave ZR0 Silk, I think is how you pronounce it. Silk is maybe a reference to the fact it's got a very lightweight, I think it's 20D. And it's still, still nylon fly sheet. So I've given it a quick inspection and it looks alright, no smell of mould, I didn't notice any taping problems. So the ground sheet's actually quite heavy duty for such a lightweight tent, this is 1.3 kilos I believe in total. And it looks quite tidy, doesn't look too muddy, I don't think there's any taped seams running across this, this looks like one piece. So as a tapered hoop you've got a longer and a shorter pole and you'll see these angled aluminium joints in it as well. Um, to give it, I think, a bit more headroom, a bit more width at the head. So it's not like a normal arch or a gothic arch. No sign of any delamination of the carbon fibre. And there seems to be life in the elastics as well, so they don't look completely punished. Well, these look quite nice, actually, nice quality. I thought it would make quite a good four-season tent as well, because you can see there's this kind of midgy mesh upper panel, but most of it is actually solid polyester. So I've just popped in the rear hoop and it was actually really easy to do because the, the mesh is continuous. And the front pole went in no problem at all. Uh, it's got a door to one side of it and then there's an offset inner. So this end comes out further and then it slopes back. So I think you'd end up sleeping diagonally and your storage and cooking space will be this side. I really don't know why Lightwave's tents don't sell better or are better known. Because this is a really nicely made tent I have to say. And I'm hoping at £90 it'll be an absolute bargain, but it's got a really nice quality about the fittings and the, the way it's finished. Um, as it's chucking down, rather than film the actual pitch, I've just gone for getting up as quick as I can. Really just to test it in this rain and see if it leaks. You can see the kind of wee prop vent at the front there. Four guys, four main guys. The one thing I would notice is about this, because it's so nylon it will stretch, there's no adjusters on the peg points which is something you see on Chinese tents quite a lot and it would be better to have line pullers there with locks at the front and probably the rear um, but it's up and it's beading nicely and there's a main seam running right down the middle here which I suspect might leak and also I suspect these guy points will leak as well but it's nothing we can't sort with some sill net Certainly one of the cosiest tents I've ever been in. There's not a lot of room, but I don't mind that if you're kind of looking for something very warm. So as you can probably see, it's extremely low. It's actually probably even lower than my Rab Summit. Um, can you see me there? Yeah, the inner lies quite low in here. Um, but it's very warm and very cosy, but it's quite wide, which is good, so you can get your pack in to this side. Anyway, it's really just a place to sleep for bike packing and backpacking. You're not going to spend a lot of time in it. It's probably not one you'd want to spend a whole winter's evening in. Right, I'm going to hit my kip. So, the Lightwave, and Lightwave tents in general, five things I like about them. Uh, number one is the build quality, if you look at it in detail it's really nicely made. There's nothing wrong with the finishing, the stitching is perfect, and the materials are very high quality. Number two is the actual fabrics themselves, uh, it's quite heavy duty in some ways. The inner tent and the ground sheet 
is very strong and is very kind of um, suitable for the mountains. So it's nicely made. Number three of five is the stability. It's so low and being a tunnel with carbon fibre poles with uh, corner sections on it, it's very strong. So it seems quite wind stable. I was slept in it last night in 30 mile an hour winds and it wasn't too noisy, it wasn't too flappy. So I'm pretty confident it'd be good in the mountains. The other thing I think is a strong point, number four, is it's got a very small footprint. So if you're in the high mountains or in difficult terrain, it's going to be easier to pitch than a lot of bigger tents when you're struggling to find a space. And the last thing, number five, is the width of the tent. It's got a very good width. You could almost get a second person in here if you were really struggling or just for an emergency. You could certainly get a dog in with you. And the extra width allows you to put your pack out the way. Things I dislike about it, it's very low as you can see. It's actually lower than my Rab Summit, which is a low tent. So you're struggling. I'm five foot eight and my head is rubbing against the, the top of this but it is a bit of a trade-off in terms of lightness and space. It's also very short, so again, five foot eight, you sleep offset in it, but even allowing for that, with my head at one end, my feet were rubbing the inner, although not touching the outer. So it's definitely not a model for tall people. Third thing I don't like about it is the vestibule is fairly limited in space, although you can detach it and pull it back. It's got enough room for a pack, but not to cook at the same time or put your pack inside, pull the inner back and you've got just enough room to cook safely. So again, all to do with the compact size of it. It's, uh, it's not very roomy. One of the other things I don't particularly like about it is it could be probably lighter. It's 1.3 kilograms and for the size these days you could probably make the same tent and run about 1, 1.1 kilos. Number five, one of the other dislikes I've got is the lack of tensioners at the guy points. It could really do with some um, line locks so you could just pull these tighter and get more tension on the tent particularly just front to back they're just fixed loops at the moment so you don't have much variation where you can put your peg so if you hit a rock you're really struggling to move the peg at the moment so there you are old but gold as they say probably from 2006 this tent but it's still in very good nick which is testament to how well lightwave make the tents i don't know why they're not higher rated and not better known um, but if you come across a second-hand light wave and you're thinking about it, don't hesitate. They really are nicely made, nicely thought out and well-constructed tents that will serve you well in the mountains. So anyway, thanks again for having a wee look at this and uh, I'll get this thing out in the next few days. We'll get a test properly in the hills and see how it goes, but I quite like it. And at £90, you really can't complain. It's probably equivalent to 300 these days. Okay, thanks again for watching and see you again soon.